Hey y'all, I hope you're doing well this morning. I, I pray for y'all and I appreciate your prayers. I want to tell you, I've had some amazing uh, gospel opportunities uh, just in the last uh, couple of days and I wanted to share them with you just to encourage you that God, if you ask God to let you be a spokesman for him, um, even if you don't think that you have the gift of speaking, he will give you opportunities. And I'm telling you, after you've done it, it is such a joyful feeling. So um, on Monday, I think it was Monday, I was um, doing a regular, a regular thing that you would do. I was calling my uh, AT&T representative about my, tel about my television and my bill. And at the end of the conversation, she's, you know, how they go through and they're like, oh, you know this and this I hope we've served you well today and all of that and um, and then she says there's something else I think I'm supposed to tell you and I can't remember what it is and with my spiritual ears that is like hello here's an opportunity and so I said could it be that there's something that you need me to pray for and she just opened up and y'all I'm asking if you would pray for her and for uh, this this story so her son um, at 19 had just gotten to be hanging out with these guys where he had met um, her his cousin's boyfriend and I think had only known him for three weeks and ended up being in the wrong place at the wrong time and this this boy I believe he murdered someone and there Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me for the noise. Got a got some kind of construction vehicle driving nearby. Um, so it turned out that of uh, he didn't he didn't hold a weapon. He didn't have anything to do with it. He was trying to find a way out. But at 19, he uh, got sentenced to life in prison. Life in prison at 19. And it turned out that when I spoke to her, this was the first time in four years that she has been able to go to the jail and actually touch her son. So it seems like a pretty hopeless situation, right? At 19 to be given a life sentence for something, you know, being caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, there's a reason why, um, you know, I told her, I said the Bible says that uh, the companion of uh, or bad company corrupts good character and that the companion of fools suffers harm which is in Proverbs y'all if you don't read your Proverbs it's really a, it's so easy just to read a proverb a, a day so I highly suggest that but anyway I was able to tell her about the life recovery Bible which she did not know about um, which I have my own story of I, I, I buy life recovery Bibles by the case and they are, um, to me, they're better than the Celebrate Recovery Bibles. And um, just a quick story as she was telling me about this. And I was saying, you know what, if we don't have that much longer to be here. And so if, he, if you could get him a Life Recovery Bible and he could um, get saved. And she said he's, he's a good kid, even in um, prison, that he has a woman, um, she calls herself Mama Ma, who who tells her that he's doing really well he's not um, he's staying far away from the bad people in prison and uh, is keeping himself you know uh, he's doing pretty well at keeping himself from being corrupted um, but still 23 years old and you've got a life sentence so he needs some hope and so I was telling her give him this Bible it has um, it's particularly written for uh, prison and for addictions and um, it has Bible notes in there about how to get yourself uh, repenting and then what the follow-through is on repentance it's a really good Bible um, and to get that and then to tell him you know that uh, what the signs are and that uh, Jesus is coming so if you will pray for him his name is Taddeus Taddeus T-A-D-I-U-S and he's here in prison in Georgia and um, 
I just want to pray that he will find the Lord. And then, while we're still here, he can lead many others to Christ in prison. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? So, um, and I, I also want us to pray for people who do prison ministry. I've never done it. Um, I, I haven't felt led to do prison ministry, but I've met people that do prison ministry, and we really do need to pray for them because prison is like the perfect place to get saved. Um, I, I'm bouncing around a little bit, as I usually do. Um, so my story about the Life Recovery Bible, particularly with regards to prison, is that I was praying uh, as I was driving home with uh, one of my daughters and my son. We picked him up at uh, camp in Missouri, Christian camp in, in Missouri. And we were driving home and I had spent about a half an hour praying and we got to outside of Nashville. And um, I said, okay, I'll, I'll take my turn driving us the rest of the way back to Atlanta. I just need to run to the restroom. So we pulled into McDonald's. And as soon as we did, when my door opened, there was a man right there. And I wasn't afraid of him uh, at all, actually. And he was very humble. And he said, ma'am, um, I just got out of prison today and I need $13. And I turned my back to him and I got $20 out of my um, glove compartment and gave it to him and held his hand and said that I was giving it to him in the name of Jesus Christ. And that um, I hoped that he would um, accept it as a love offering to him from Jesus. Um, so when I came back to the, car, uh, to the car, my kids said, you know, mom, he came to the window and he said, thank you to the kids. And I was like, wow. And I went, oh, I have life recovery Bibles in the car. So we went to go find where he had gone on to. He'd moved to a gas station. And I went up to him and I said, you know, did anybody tell you in prison about Jesus? And he said, no, but my grandmother did. Um, and I said, so you've never been given a Bible? And he said, no. And I was just amazed. You know, I mean, it's, it, I don't know. I was just amazed that you can be in prison and not be given a Bible. But um, anyway, I, I gave him a life recovery Bible and I told him to read the Bible every day and just do what it says. Just do it, just do it. And so I hope his name is Jonathan, and I hope that I see Jonathan in heaven. Um, but that was God, perfect timing to use me to deliver his message, which I had uh, a Bible in my car to give him. Um, okay, so I'd like for I'd like for us to pray for the people in prison that they um, they get delivered, they get the rock of escape in Jesus Christ and then there will be many more that will be brought to a Christ uh, in these last days moments even uh, in prison I don't know I just have a real a real strong burden for the prisoners um, and and really this woman she's a believer but she wasn't aware of the time that we're in so you know I think if you had your 19 year old go to jail for life it would be pretty hard to be thinking about <laughs> about Jesus and the signs going on, right? You're, as a mother, you're all you can think about is that how this injustice uh, has happened, and that was the other problem too. Was for her to get an attorney uh, to represent him well was a hundred thousand dollars, and she didn't have the money to do it, so he did not get good representation. So, you know, lately we've been hearing um, some discussion about prison reform, and it really is something that we need, to, as Christians, we need to be praying about. Um, you know, Jesus said he came to set the captives free. Um, so if they can get their hearts free in Christ, there could be a revival in the prison, right? And of course, we don't know what's going to happen in, to the prisons once we... Um, the bride of Christ, once we fly away, we don't know what's going to happen in the prisons. So um, if you would pray for, for prisons and for Taddeus, then yesterday I've had this issue, uh, this personal issue where I had, uh, I think it was a attack for being a Christian where someone set it up that um, I would, I, I don't want to go into the whole story, but anyway, I've got to go to court. Uh, I'm being uh, accused of hit and run when 
I tapped a car in a parking lot that was valet parked right behind me and I um, because I tapped it I left my phone number even though I didn't see any damage and then about a month later I had the police call me and tell me that they were uh, I was gonna be arrested if I did not come into the police station in 30 minutes which I did and then I was charged with hit and run so we're gonna see what God has uh, in store I I tried to uh, witness a little bit to the police officer I believe it's because on my car this whole thing was set up because of my car I have um, an always only Jesus sticker and I have a um, the Bible has the answers uh, for biblequestions.org uh, I have that big old bumper sticker and then I've got a big old cross hanging from my front so you know I'm pretty much a, a walking billboard or a driving billboard and um, so yeah Satan he sends people to aggravate me and to but you know I've been one time God um, told me to take three Bibles when I went when I was called up for jury duty and I ended up witnessing to first to a Catholic and then to two other people and I gave all three Bibles away and I'm I'm like pretty sure the Catholic guy got saved and that I'm gonna see him in heaven um, but you, you know God uses everything everything for his purposes and so I don't really have any fear about it but I am um, well let me get to them what happened yesterday was yesterday I had contacted the insurance woman uh, who's been great her name is Lisa and um, I contacted her to write a letter for me to be able to give to the judge next week and it <laughs> it turned out as we were as we had finished talking business she told me that she had this strange dream that morning and the dream was that she saw what she could see up in the sky look what looked like UFOs aliens she said that it looked like that she was seeing aliens up in the sky and then it turned into that they were demons and then she said with all she saw a bunch of them and then she said all of a sudden she sees one large man in the sky who let's see she said he was um, wearing he had blonde curly hair and he was wearing white with a towel around his waist could have been a sash but she said towel uh, around his waist and she said it looked like and this is what she said that he was an archangel glowing and that she immediately felt power and strength from him and she wasn't afraid of the demons anymore I thought I was like I can't believe this that here I, I mean I've talked to her maybe two or three times <coughs> excuse me two or three times during this process but here she had had this dream that I have not had dreams of seeing demons and then she was telling me she has also seen a large black demon like figure at the bottom of her stairs um, once before so um, Lisa I I love you and I hope she's watching this video I asked her if it was okay to share her story I have not had any tribulation type dreams but to see you know I told her that the UFOs and the demons were the same thing and what was coming and just to think that uh, through this whole insurance thing and this false accusation of uh, me being a hit and run when I left my information, uh, that I got to talk to Lisa and find out about uh, her dream that she'd had that day. It's just, it's really just amazing. I said, it sounded like to me that it was Michael, the archangel. I mean, here she, she said, she says, yeah, I don't know why I use that word archangel. Um, I'm encouraging her to start reading her Bible she doesn't she doesn't read it regularly but I said you know uh, that is one of the things that here you use the wor word Archangel and Michael is called an Archangel I talked to her about Michael and Gabriel and that Ga that Michael is the warring angel the one with the power and the strength and that um, when Jesus comes back in the clouds that there will be a trumpet call of God and the voice of an Archangel um, we don't know who that is, right? Um, could be, it, we don't know. We don't know, but we sure do look forward to it. So Lisa, uh, thanks for letting me share your story. Y'all, there are just so many opportunities to talk about God. Every day, every phone conversation you have is an opportunity to talk about God. So um, 
I'm off to the police station now to see if I can um, get my charges dropped. And if I don't, I'm still walking by the Spirit always and trying to be a representative for Christ. So we'll see what happens. I love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.